I owe it to you guys to talk sales today. I did 10 roofs in an hour and a half. So many of you guys do what four of the five up here did. You have to have the balls to walk away, not look back and say, I'm doing this. Which one's gonna make movement? Which one's gonna make change? You know what's hard? Convincing yourself to stand back up and keep knocking. Do you see how I'm changing your frame and the psychology of what you're doing? I've actually got something I wanna help you out with. Damn it, so good! Mic drop! Who's had a uh, who's had a good conference so far? Let's hear it. Who's had a good conference so far? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, honored to be here. My name's Sam Taggart. I uh, flew all the way here from Utah. Have we got any Utah people in here? There's two. There's three things Utah's famous for. Do we know what that is? Skiing, Mormons, and Mormons leveraging Mormons through either door knocking or network marketing. That's what we're known for. So it's called the MLMs, right? Um, pleased and honored to be here. I first want to thank uh, Dimitri and team. I know what it takes to put on an event like this. It is a lot of work. And so thank you guys for the energy you bring. I know like his biggest gift you guys can give him is a big high five thank you and a review. So make sure to show Dimitri and team some love. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to give a free ticket away because Dimitri's like, don't sell anything. I was like, okay, I'm just going to give you a free ticket. So we're going to do a giveaway. So our event's 2000 bucks, so it's a $2,000 giveaway. And uh, you QR scan this, and at the end of this speech, I'm gonna pull up the result, and I'm going to pick one. That's it, 2,000 bucks, here you go, come to the event, it's free. David Goggins, John Maxwell, Brad Lee, Hal Elrod. Uh, we have 18 amazing breakouts, it's a two day event, just coming around the corner. I know you wanna get out of Minnesota, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be dope. So January 8th and 9th, it's my birthday on the 8th, free ticket, go submit. All you need to do is put your name, phone, or email, and we're gonna pick a winner at the end of this speech. Sound good? Yes, sir. Okay, hurry. I'm gonna put this QR code on the next couple slides too, just so you have it, because I'm gonna keep speaking while you put, fill that out. So I started in door to door when I was 11 years old. I started doing the little magazines, or little coupon books with my brother, and then when I was 13, my cousin was like, hey, let's go knock and paint addresses on the curbs. And I was like, is this working? Did it work for everybody? Yeah. It did not work? Your next door to you was like, yeah, it worked. Come on, you just need, you must have an iPhone. I'm, kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm switching over to an iPhone right now. They got me. Um, okay, so he's like, hey, let's do, a, let's do this curb thing. Has anybody in here painted curbs say I have? You have? Yes, killer money. If you have teenagers right now, I just tra I'm training my niece. She just got her first stencil kit yesterday. She texts me, she's like, what kind of paint do I buy? What's my tape? Because she was so fed up at her nine hour an hour, dollar an hour job working at Jamba Ju or whatever, some smoothie shack, the Roxbury or something. And she was like, she's like, I need to get paid more. So I was like, go buy some stencils, get some spray paint, and here you're gonna make some money. That one not work, it's the same one. Okay, that one works. I don't know why it's different. Um, so what I do is I, 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 I'm, I'm 13 years old. I start making good money. I was making probably 100 bucks an hour. And all my friends are like, how do you always have like, money to go do cool stuff? And, and you could buy whatever. And, and I was like, well, I'm painting curbs. Do you guys want to do it with me? And they're like, sure. And so I was like, how about this? I'll give you nine bucks. I'll keep the other, like, 11 bucks for overhead and profit, and we'll get you painting curbs. So I buy a couple stencil kits, and uh, we start riding our bicycles to neighborhoods and um, drawing out the map quests, and we start doing it. But I'm gonna have a competition, so I need a couple volunteers. Who, who in here thinks they're like a really good door knocker? I need like, a, I knock doors, like where's my like tribe? I need some, I need five people up on stage, quick, go. Five people, let's go. We're gonna do a game. I need five people. Come on. Where are you at? Where's my door knocker? We got a curb, we got a veteran. We got a, we're gonna do a curb painting competition. Okay, we got a veteran. Okay, get up here, Steven, you in here? Yep, yep. Okay, we got Ben. Okay, we got some talent. We got five right here. This is it, this is my five. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, what we're gonna do, you guys are like, what did you just sign up for? I just like, I just signed you up. This is a good looking crew, minus Ben. So, um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, 
Okay, we're gonna do a competition, and I'm not gonna give you my curb pitch, because I started training door-to-door -door, uh, roofing about three years ago, and I'm like getting all technical. Anthony Domenico has me come out and do like some training in his university, and I was like, I've never sold roofs. Like, what the heck, I don't, like how am I supposed to be on your online training platform, and you're gonna video me, and I've never done this. So he does his pitch, and I was like, oh, this is how I would do my pitch. He's like, that was really good. And then I was like, I go out and knock, and I'm like, man, this is too much. And then I ended up doing the curb pitch in roofing. And I just said, I'm gonna teach you guys the door approach today, because I feel like a lot of the keynotes have been like awesome, great job, but I was like, I wanna get into the nuts and bolts of like selling. Who's with me? Who wants to learn that? Nuts and bolts of like, let's talk sales, because we all wanna sell more, right? And then my breakout, I haven't really talked sales, so I figured I owe it to you guys to talk sales today. Sound good? So the competition's gonna look like this. I wanna, I'm gonna, you guys have literally one minute to do a door approach. We're gonna have a people's vote, and the winner, I will send them a swag kit. I just made some dope shirts and some dope hats that I just came out with that I will send you. You just have to text me your name and your address to send it. Okay, ready? So, the game goes like this. I'm customer. Uh, I need a handheld? Good. Whew. Okay, I'm customer. These guys are reps, and you have one minute, so I need a timer. Can you do a one minute timer up there or something? Um, and whoever comes up with the best curb approach gets a swag bag. We cool with this? Get... No, so curbs, not a roof pitch. This is to paint my curb. I'm making you think. And I did this intentionally not to do roofs because I want to make you think because if you don't know how to craft a door approach on any widget, you could sell these little clickers door to door. You could sell anything door to door. I did an experiment to prove my point. I started a little YouTube show I never launched it called Will It Sell? And I went out and sold bounce houses door to door. I went out and sold spy gear door to door. I went out and sold random crap. And I found, I've sold no soliciting signs door to door with 100 top sales reps. And I found, but were you at that? Did you do that? Were you at that summit, Moose? But yeah, Moose was there. He did it. Um, so, Zach saw us do it. We get the same objections, you get the same problems, you get the same anxiety whether you're selling a roof or a freaking no soliciting sign, I'm telling you. So I wanna dumb this down to painting curbs when I was 13 year old Sam, okay? And then I'm gonna teach the sales principles after it. Who wants to go first? You get one minute. Okay, all right, here we go. We got Bobby in the house. Okay, so yeah, you gotta like knock my door, let's do this. Knock, knock. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, so we've uh, done a lot of uh, curb painting in the neighborhood, and as a result, we're offering free estimates to everyone in the neighborhood, and we saw that you hadn't had your curb uh, painted yet. Um, have you considered painting your curb before? No, we're not interested. Okay, no problem, I gotcha. Well, one of the things that we're doing right now is we're gonna be out here on Tuesday with your neighbor, Sam, and uh, we're just gonna chat real quick with them, and if you have a few seconds afterwards, we could step by and just give you a quick quote on painting your curb. Yeah, that's cool. Can you just like leave me your info and I'll let you know? Yeah, no problem. So listen, on, on Thursday, we're going to be here at 2 o'clock. And at 2.15, we'll swing by. We'll chat with you real quick about painting your curb. Yeah, yeah, stop by. I might be here. Okay. Cool. Okay, let's take this down to 45 seconds. Because you didn't, you, that was like long. I felt like you, you okay. Um, it might, you're up though. Let's see what happens when you do it. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna try to be as real of a customer as I can. I hate role playing when people are like, yeah, come on in. Like nobody does that. This is door to door. If you've knocked doors, you know people are like, get off my property. Okay, you're up. Knock, knock. What's up? Can I help you? Hey, how you doing? I'm Ben from Classy Curbs. Oh, cool. What do you do? So I'd like to enhance the value of your curb today by putting a fluorescent uh, stamp on your curb. Cool. How much is it? $2.99. 299 bucks. Hey, it's not the price, it's the value. Yeah. People are gonna be able to find you at night. Homeowners are gonna envy you. Yeah, that's okay, it. we're not interested, dude. <laughs> Get, like, honestly, I probably, that's my wife's thing, she does all that. Well, since you're such a nice guy, I, I think I could knock off 50 bucks. Yeah, not really my thing, man. All right, do you know somebody who might be interested in what I'm doing? Yeah, go talk to Tom next door. He always buys stuff from door-to-door -door guys. Perfect. Thanks for your time. <laughs> I'm not going to be easy. Good job. Hey, let's give it up for Ben. That was good.
Good job. Guys, this is scary. He's doing this in front of hundreds of people. You did not cheer loud enough. Let's give it up for Ben and Bobby. There we go. Okay. This is scary shit. I thought it was a minute. That's 45 seconds. Yeah, we changed it. Okay. Go. Hey, man. Um, I see your rims are kind of jacked. How often do you hit your curb when you pull in your driveway? You know, I'm kind of a speed demon. Yeah, hey, I, me too. I get it. Um, but those look like really nice rims. I've actually got something I want to help you out with. We've got this new fluorescent paint. We're able to paint numbers on your curbs. I know it's going to really help you out when you're pulling in the driveway. It's going to save you a ton of money fixing these rims. Um, do you want blue or red? I see you got blue shutters. Probably blue. Blue? Okay. Yeah. Give me like 15 minutes. I'm going to run out there. Number is 2757. Uh huh. Okay. I'll be right back. Cool. Damn it! So good! Mic drop! Okay, Jordan, that was good. That was good. That was pretty good. I'm, I'm fucked. <laughs> Cody's smart. He's like, I'm going last to see what I need to do. Yeah. Okay, go. Hey, sorry to barge in on you. I know it's dinner time. You've had like a bunch of guys come to your door or whatever. Uh, we're just, we're the dudes out in the neighborhood that are doing the numbers and we put your favorite teams on, favorite colors, whatever, whatever your wife likes, makes her happy. Um, we're doing a couple of neighbors today. Do uh, you mind if we give you a price? Yeah, not right now. Not right now? Yeah. What would be holding you back right now? Just not interested, you know? You we're interested? set. We're set. We, we got the numbers here, you know? You got the numbers? You got a favorite team? Who's your team? Uh, we like the Denver Broncos. Which we did an emblem to go with your team. Uh, that's a, it's kind of cool, an I guess. Emblem, yeah. whoever you like. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. Close me, you little turd. Let's go. Give me your business. Hey, what the? Give me I your can business. Just stop. That's the point. Okay, this is okay. All right. Last one, Cody. What's up? How's it going? My name's Cody, um, and I'm a curb painting specialist. Oh, cool. And I've been doing some, some work in your neighborhood, um, and I was wondering if you're satisfied with the way your curb looks currently. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't really looked at it in a long time. Okay. You um, tell me. I mean, is it... Um, I noticed, you know, some scrapes on it. Um, yeah. it. It could definitely use some improvements. Um, would you be interested in us giving you maybe a quote? How much? Yeah, how much is it? Um, we're looking around $250. Yeah. God, it's like 20 bucks. That's a lot, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, two, 20 bucks. We'll say, I should have said the price. Say 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's probably good, isn't it? Like, can you read it still? Like, we're good? Um, I can barely read it, um, and it would increase your property value, you know, if you took care of this. Uh, it's something I can knock out tomorrow for you. Yeah, I mean, you can do it. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Okay, let's give it up, Cody. Hey, let's give a big round of applause for all of them. All of them. Okay. Okay, real quick. Hold on, I'm going to make him stay up here for a second. What did we just learn through this simple experiment? So we saw some stuff. We're going to give some feedback. Anybody have some feedback they want to give right here? In the back, you got to yell it. So he created a problem and an icebreaker in one. Did you guys see that? That was really good. So he said, I'm going to talk about something that is not salesy, right? So he had a great, let me like, we call it an intentional loop right at the beginning. He's like, let's throw them on a loop. We call it the shirts and hats questions. Oh, cool. Are you a Broncos fan? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's something that has nothing to do with you in selling. You did a great job and he created a problem. Right here, Jose. He did not give me an option. How many of these people were like, I mean, would you be mind if I could like maybe write up an estimate and if I could maybe stop by on Tuesday? What did I do to you? I'm like, yeah, I mean, come by if I'm here. Anybody ever had that? <laughs> you, you gave me the easiest way to tell you no. Yep, I'm interested. Yep, do that and I won't be here is what I'm thinking, right? Steven, great. He actually started off really well. He did a term we call eight miling. Eight miling comes from the rap video Eminem. I know I'm white. I know I grew up in a trailer. I know my friend shot himself in the foot and his name's Chad on Devilla and told me something I don't know about me. Mic drop, right? He's overcoming all the objections before they happen. Am I right? Am I right or am I right? Yes. And did, did he do this? 
He said, hey, I know you've had a lot of door-to-door guys coming by and it's just bugging you. It's dinner time. I know you're busy. Did you hear him say that? Do you catch that? That's called an eight mile. Awesome job. And then he sucked at the end when he's like, so, you know, <laughs> what do you say? You kind of did that too, Cody. You were like, would that be okay? <laughs> Damn it, close me. Did you guys get to see it from this angle? Was this interesting just to see you guys are all making those same mistakes? The question is, how much money is it costing you doing that every time on repeat? A lot. We're doing this on repeat the wrong way. I know I put you in a simulated situation right here, but I said, how can I, how can I show everybody a reflection of them in only 45 minutes. So, let's take a quick vote. I'm gonna hold the mic over their head. We're gonna go round of applause for the swag bag. Who votes over here? Hey, you'd win in golf, dude. Right here? Those are good sympathy claps. Right here? Hey, that was better than the first two. Right here? Veteran? Right here? That feels good. Okay, we got a clear winner. Text Jordan. Hey, Jordan. Text DM me your address. I'll send you a swag thing. Okay, let's give it up for our contestants. That was awesome. That was awesome. You better duck and you finna be dead the minute you're running me. 100% of you was a fifth of a percent of me. I'm about to fuck you. I'm available. You want to battle? I'm available. I'm blowing up like an inflatable. I'm undebatable. I'm unavoidable. I'm unavoidable. Oh, that's what that was. All right, so the pitch. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Okay? So I noticed. So let me. Can I give you my pitch? Steven, come be my person. So I'll give you my curb pitch, ready? I did this, I mean, I'm a little rusty. I hadn't done this since I was like 17. Hey, hey sorry to bug you. We're just the ones doing the, oh, one thing that Cody said really well is he's like, I am the curb painting specialist. He was clear on what he was doing. That was a good thing he did, good job. Hey, we're just the ones doing all the curbs in the neighborhood. We just got done. And a lot of you guys, nobody really bandwagoned very well. So I just got done finishing Tiffany's next door. It's actually drying right now. And then Jerry, two houses down. You probably know a lot of the neighbors, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you're next on our list. We're trying to get everybody's done so it's all in uniform because the police, the fire department actually recommend that you have it so they get to your home sooner. A portion of what we do is we donate some of this to actually, it's a kids in Africa that are just like trying to get more entrepreneurs and stuff like that. So yeah, so we donate a portion. So it's actually really cool. So we're doing everybody in the neighborhood right now. So we do black on white or white on black. Most people do black on white. Which yeah, would you yeah, prefer, the black on white or the white on black? Yeah, the white on black. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we get those done now. It's 15 bucks, we take cash or check. I pick that up when I'm done. So I'll just get that when I'm done. Awesome, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stay up here, Steven. So I said, who was I? So I'm doing this, I tried to beat the 45 second clock. On a $20 product, you could do that. I just interviewed a guy, Pest Control. He's like, if I don't sell him a $600 contract value in under four minutes, I feel like I failed. Like, how do, like, I'm still telling my joke in the first two minutes. Like, how? So, who? I gotta break the ice, create curiosity back, um, and then do a bandwagon, but then I'm gonna put a fourth one on there that you did really well, which was eight mile. So I could say things like this. Hey, I know you probably get a ton of people coming trying to sell you a Kirby vacuum and all this like $2,000 crap you don't want. I'm not one of those guys. Don't worry, I'm doing something totally different. So what we do is, and let's, t let's apply this to roofing now. Can we get into roofing? You're like, don't teach me how to paint curbs, teach me how to sell roofs. It's the same thing, a widget is a widget. My first day, I go in to do roofs. I did 10 roofs in an hour and a half. And I had no training, nobody taught me. I was like shipped out to Maryland and I said, ooh, new widget, follow the same framework. Say the same overcoming objection lines because if you're selling pest control or roofs, you're still gonna be like, and no soliciting signs, not interested, need to talk to my wife, I can't afford it. I got those same objections. The worst one I got in no soliciting that was the most common and Zach can verify for this was, oh no, we actually like solicitors. <laughs> Hold on. Hi, do you need a new roof? Like, it was mind blowing. We're like, never, no one said ever, 
I love solicitors. I don't need the no soliciting sign. But I realize that buyers are liars. Am I right or am I right? Say yes. So hit them where it counts. Where was I? So bandwagon. Did, did you notice how I made this just like your next? So the very first day I go out to Maryland, this is my first roofing day, this is a couple years ago, I just was like, let's try this curb painting approach. I had nine people, eight or nine people shadowing me, which most of you guys are like, how do you do that? The next time he had me come out, I had 30, because we helped this company grow. <laughs> so how do you do that? So I had eight guys shadowing me, and I didn't like to do the inspection, because I'm only out there for a couple hours. So I, I knocked door, and I'm like, hey, We've been the one inspecting all the neighborhoods. It's my area. I'm the one in charge of getting all the homes inspected due to the recent storm events. Um, so we just got done with this one, this one, this one. I go into the names, and I say, so he's going to hop up on yours, and we're going to take some photos, drop you the report when we're done. We're just doing everybody. So I just want to make sure that um, we let you know before that happens. So you get up there. Do you want to go on that side or that side? And I'd walk. The same thing that I just did in curbs. Do you want, hey, is it better to put the ladder on this side or this side? White on black or black on white? And I would turn around and I would walk away instead of what most of you guys did up here was like, would you be okay if I got on roof and set up time maybe tomorrow? Would that work for you? I mean, we could maybe talk to you and call you and send you some info. I mean, would you be, I don't know. It sounds cooler with an accent, you know what I'm saying? But, um, but <laughs> for the effect. But most of the time we're kind of asking them instead of telling them. Assertive versus passive. Who makes more money, the assertive person or the passive one? Who makes more money, assertive or passive? Assertive. What? Assertive. Okay, so if I'm assertive and I've got some balls, I'm going to do what's called the cocky walk away, like Sam Taggart throwing at bowling. I'm like, strike. But if you look back, that's not a cocky walk away on the bowl. Am I right or am I right? Has anyone ever done that? Oh, that's a, that's a strike. <laughs> you have to have the balls to walk away, not look back and say, I'm doing this. because. If they tell me no, so tell me no. No thanks. Um, I'm role playing. Just don't interrupt me. Okay. No, no, don't. That was good. Say no thanks. No thanks. I, I, no, I may, sorry, I'm newer at this. Like, I, I must not explain myself. I'm in charge of all the neighbors. I'm doing the inspection. It doesn't cost you any money. Like, I'm inspecting all of the homes. Okay. I just, I, you, I'm not like the sales guy that comes through. You think, oh, okay. yeah, I just want to make sure I was. I'm, I, I get that a lot. Most people mistake me for some like sales dude selling alarm system or pest control or whatever. We're just inspecting all the homes right now. It doesn't cost you anything. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted, sorry, I, my bad. I didn't explain yeah. myself. Sorry. Yeah. Right? I'm like, I don't know what a rejection would look like. He's like, I don't want you on my roof. I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'll like mark you down as like a no inspect. Like, I, 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 okay. Does that make sense? Do you see how I'm changing your frame and the psychology of what you're doing? Versus, hey, we're really doing this offering. We're a great company. And let me tell you, we're A plus on the BBB. And, you know, and I'm begging him to buy. Now what do I come off like? So the tip here is be the meter reader. When a guy walks to your side of your house and reads your meter like they used to, did the guy open the door, the homeowner, and be like, get off my property, what are you doing? I'm reading the meter, like, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Does that make sense? Say yes. yes. What? Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Say yes. yes. You guys are awake. Say yes. Good. Sit down, Stephen. Awesome job. High five. You did a great. Oh, maybe I need you again. Okay. So break the ice. Intentional loop. Throw them on an intentional loop. So don't just like ham on them right away. You got to give them some love. Like he talked about the tire and he's like, hey, you see those rims? So I look for signs of like, be really intuitive. You got to have your head on a swivel and be like, oh, do you, you guys got kids? I got three little girls too. Like how old are they? Say something like that. Be a person, not a robot. Make a friend. I remember I was out training in California and this guy was just like robot mode. And I said, screw the script. I don't want you to say anything, but just make a connection with the next person. And he gets a deal. And I was like, see? Changed the rest of his career. He went on to make like 200 grand the next year where he had been broke as a joke two months sleeping in his car. 
And I said, you need to make a friend. What? You got a program. So I go out to Jacksonville. This was about a year. Is JT here? No. So uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina. And I got knocking with them, and he's telling me his pitch, and he's showing me what he's doing. And I was like, let me try this. Let's create a program. And when I create door approaches, I, I, it's like my favorite thing. I probably created 20 different roofing pitches. And I said, let's make a program. So we're in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I'm out knocking, and I'm like, hey, we're doing the Weather Watch program. And he's like, what's that? You know, you probably heard about it. It's a pretty big deal. <laughs> no, no, never heard about it. Oh, nothing? You haven't got like the letters or the, you didn't see nothing? You got the notice though from the National Weather Service about on April 8th, didn't you? What was the notice? <laughs> Storm alert, right? <laughs> You got the notice from the National Weather Services like on April 8th, didn't you? Okay, good. That's actually why we're here. We're following up on that. Um, it's basically a program where we're in charge of inspecting the, the roofs and seeing if they qualify for their insurance to actually pay for it. So if, you're in, if it did qualify, what's really cool, you have homeowner's insurance, right? Okay. Um, not 100% sure if your home's a good fit or not, but what's cool, it's a funded program through your insurance. Really? Yeah. It's funded. <laughs> I'm saying the same thing that you are saying with different terms. So I sound completely different than the first 10 roofers that knocked the door saying, we're doing free inspections. You know what I mean? So all of a sudden, we go eight for nine homes in a row. We get on. And he's like, whoa, this works. And I go, yeah, let's come up with a new program. Plug in new program. It worked too. Because I'm not selling, what am I doing? I'm introducing a program and then I'm explaining what's in it for them and what's in it for me and that's the why. So what's in it for you, it's really simple. I come by, most people don't know about the program, whatever the program is, you could create a million different programs like I said. And uh, What's in it for you is you don't have to pay for the roof, you just cover your deductible or whatever, and then what's in it for us is the insurance pays us. It's so cool, like, we make money. I'm not out here for free, I wouldn't be sweating bullets today if I was, like, not making anything. Because what happens is most people want to know, like, this is too good to be true, like, they want to know how this works. So tell them up front. They pay me, you're already paying for them, so might as well get something out of it. And then, don't ask, do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop up there, I'm gonna run some numbers and take some pictures of damage, see if your house even qualifies, cross our fingers, hopefully you have no problem, like hopefully. I mean, it would suck if you did, but I mean, we gotta hop up there anyway. So I'm indifferent, you see what I'm doing here? I'm pulling back as if I could care less. I'm like, yeah, cross our fingers, I mean, most of your neighbors have had problems, but you never know, you just could have had like a force field over it, and cross our fingers, let's hope that. And, um, I'll get up there and take the photos either way, make sure that we don't have anything, and then I'll let you down, and I'll be the first to tell you, like, let's not do anything. And we call this an inverse close. I'm going for the no. Does that make sense? So that's a fun trick. It's a, it's a reverse close, an inverse close. So then I'm like, hey, well, let's, uh, you know, let's, I mean, worst case scenario, you have something and the insurance covers it. So, I mean, it's like win-win either way. I'm going to get up there. Is this side or this side the best place to put the ladder? I'll just be back in a minute. You guys going, hey, you guys got any fun plans for tonight? You guys going like partying or anything? No, you're going to be here? Cool. It'll take me like 15 minutes. We'll be back in a sec. They can't be like, no, come back on Tuesday. It's like they just told me they had no plan. Like they're sitting there. But if I'm like, hey, when's a good time? I could do this inspection thing. They're like, never. Right? But I'm like, hey, you do anything crazy cool tonight? Like, I mean, a lot of people are going to the brewery. Like, no, no, we're just staying here. Cool, cool. It takes me like 15 minutes. I'll come down after I'm done and show you the pictures. Walk away. But so many of you guys do what four of the five up here did, and we call it the killer of the pause. Is they seek the validation of homeowner to move on. One more time. They seek the validation of the homeowner to move on. Therefore, you're a passive, not very good sales rep. Because an assertive 
good sales rep doesn't need the homeowner's validation to move on. They're the ones creating, and we call this a rain swap. So imagine I'm sitting here on a horse and buggy, and I got the homeowner here that's got the reins. I know when I can grab reins and I'm starting to drive. You know that sales situation when you know you're like, whoop, I'm in charge now. Does that make sense? You guys have seen that. Anybody that's sold long enough knows when they take the reins over. We call it a rain swap. Okay, moving on, because this is the only thing I want to train on. So I'm going to play this video. The bigger problem isn't this sales training. This was like 15 minutes of dope sales training. Did you guys learn something from the sales training we just did? Let's hear it. The bigger problem has to do with this video. No, it's a single word, just two tiny letters. Some people let no define them, but there are others who let it refine them because they know that somewhere along the way, those no's start adding up. Drop by drop, the negative becomes a positive and adversity turns into an ally. For us, no is a word we wear like a badge of honor. It's more than a job because we know that it's never been about knocking on doors. It's always been about opening them, about creating a profession we're proud of and a tribe we're proud to belong to, where no makes us better, resilient, prepared for anything, where two letters becomes endless possibilities, where sweat, cold, and long hours today turn into brighter tomorrow. No might be hard today, but makes tomorrow that much better. Better for your family, your future, your education, or your children. Welcome to a world where no doesn't mean no. It means now. A true door knocker knows the, the failure. They know that sitting on the curb feeling. They know that getting your face kicked in is a struggle. And when you get, like, we put this video together a year or two ago, and when you get that text or that thing from your family, or you're, having, you're going after a goal, or you have this like, drive to change your life around. I mean, there was a guy that hit me up in Australia literally a week ago like Australia, he sends me this video. It's like this seven minute video. And he's like, I found you on YouTube. And you watch this YouTube video saying that I can make $100,000 in a year selling solar. And he says, solars, puts an S at the end. I guess that's what they say in Australia. And uh, he puts this video together and he's like, believe it or not, I actually made a hundred grand in six months. He's like, I was about to lose my house. I was going into like literally into foreclosure. COVID had just hit. I had no idea what I was gonna do. I watched your video on YouTube, and I, I said, you know what, I'm gonna, I, I have a friend that, I, that is, runs a solar company, I'm gonna try it out. So he calls his friend, he recruits himself, he says, I need, like, I, this has to work or else I'm royally effed. And it's so cool seeing those kind of stories, and some of you guys are the stories like that in this room, but I'm gonna invite you to take this to a new level. Because what happens is that story of him making 100 grand, I high five him, I congratulate him, and I say, that's an amazing chapter. What's next? The complacency that kicks in in this industry is almost sad. You make enough so quickly that you burn out so quickly, and you limit yourselves as a business owner and as a rep. So the four problems I see in this industry is one, a lot of companies in here, they just don't buy into D2D. They're like, it doesn't work. I've tried hiring a couple people and they suck, they quit. It's too much time, headache, X, Y, Z. They say, I don't wanna be seen as that door-to-door -door sales company online. I wanna protect my image. Oh, we're not those shady door knockers. I'm like, hell no, I'm not shady. I will run circles around your company and I am proud to do what I do. And that's why I give out swag that says, I knock doors. And I wanna wear that badge with pride. I wanna change the perspective. So when I started our company, it wasn't out of like, ooh, I wanna be a coach. I actually had no, no intention of doing what I was doing. 
Um, it was, I wanted to just do something to unify, up-level, bring honor and integrity to the door-to-door -door space because I felt like it gets spit on. I felt like people looked at it and said, ah, that's a scumbag job. That's not a real job. Oh, uh, you don't, like, your company's not doors. But if you said, yeah, my company does online leads and marketing and Facebook and all this other stuff, I'm like, you don't get yelled at. You don't get spit on. You don't get made fun of, like, when you say it like that. But that shame that the door-to-door -door stigma has created is actually repelling people from it. My whole thing is you should gravitate and run towards it. Because I've helped companies 10, 50, X, literally 50 X, like in six months, like quickly. The second they say, you know what? I'm gonna buy into this. Hey, did we miss a slide? Oh no, we got it. They don't put in the work. <laughs> okay, good, it's coming. I was at dinner last night, and I don't know who I was talking to. Who was I at this bar with last night? And he was like, I was like, what's the one thing you've learned at this conference? And he's like, you know, I've heard the same theme like three times. I need to start a YouTube channel. And I was like, oh, last night, I was like, need a roof in Kansas City. So I Googled it, or I, I like just put it in YouTube, and I'm like, oh, cool, four views two years ago. Three, two views, two views, 47 views. And I was like, yeah, that's going to get you, like, you're going to spend how much time and energy making this stupid YouTube video for your two views? That doesn't even mean converted leads. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That's what you got told to do? And the amount of time you're spending to go make this stupid YouTube video that nobody watched for two years in Kansas City, because this is me as a homeowner that is trying to look for a roof, I will go knock a door, sell the deal, and make five times more money than you sitting here getting your three views. Am I right or am I right? Is social media a bad thing? No, you see me on it all the time. I'm looking at buying a roof. I just YouTubed, I need a new roof, and that's what happened. If I wanted to use YouTube to recruit, hell yeah. I use it very much so for that. Because I wanna have a bunch of foot soldiers that I recruit that are talented people to plug into my organization to go knock more doors. If I'm in front of your face, or you're watching some swipe up ad thing or on Facebook, who's gonna win? Me. Are you saying no to me, what I just did to you, Stephen? That's a lot harder to say no to than you scrolling through Instagram one day. Which one takes action? Which one's a call to, which one's gonna make movement? Which one's gonna make change? But all y'all say, door to door is so hard. I'm like, door to door is not hard. You know what's hard? It's when you're sitting on the curb after your face gets kicked in and convincing yourself to stand back up and keep knocking. That's what's hard. So is door-to-door -door the problem or your own personal development and mentality the problem? Your emotional resilience is the problem, not door-to-door. -door. Yet you guys have a leadership problem, not a rep problem. You guys are like, all oh, my reps are lazy. The Gen Z, the Gen Xs of the world, they're just lazy generations. No, you have a leadership problem. So the average roofer I see, I've been training, I've probably been to 50, 60 roofing companies. I was in Atlanta two days ago. I go to Atlanta Pink Gorilla tomorrow. Um, same shit, dude, it's this. If they do freaking four a month, they're super cool. They're getting by, they're making what they make it a normal job. And they're, talking, they're knocking 60 doors a week. They're talking to 20 people maybe a week. I've done literally three workshops and I asked this question and I built this slide off of the information that I got here at this event. So this is facts, because it's everybody that I talk to and I see a lot of head nods going like this. So I'm like, I'm t you're telling me you talk to literally 60 when you should be talking to 600, or you should be knocking 600 doors a week, but you knock 60. You talk to 20 when you should be talking to 200. You inspected four when you should be talking to 40. You filed two when you should be filing 20. You produce one when you should be doing 13. So at a true door-to-door, -door, like a true person that can wear the shirt I hand out with pride, would do is this, 10 plus a week. If you just go work, 
you should be doing 10 plus a week. Can I get an amen? amen. And some of you guys now go back to, I'm going to, so, so to 10 times your results, you just got to go I knock door. So let's talk about what if. So what if you actually did it? And you said, okay, let's put an example together. So I have 10 reps, and I even dumbed this down because I put the real numbers in, what, 200? And I was like, they're not going to, like, they won't understand it. They won't, like, this won't compute. They'll, like, think this is too ludicrous. So I actually cut it in half for you guys. 100 opportunities a week. I talked to 100 people a week, what you should be doing. And they closed 10% of those, which were the numbers that I put up there. With an average deal size of 14 grand, it's 1.4 million a week, which would be $67 million with 10 sales guys that actually followed a door-to-door -door program and then were actually full-time knockers. What if you had 20 guys? What if you could get your people to actually get over that emotional resilience problem they have and some, and, we all have it, me included. I still get anxiety driving out to neighborhoods. I go train all the time. I'm literally like still shaking. But I've convinced myself how I've, I've created, we call it boundaries to overcome that lizard brain, the amygdala inside of us, the fight or flight that stops us from actually going and producing. I got this text two days ago, literally. This is a company, so this, this is interesting. Um, you probably can't read it, but it's like the growth of, so this company started in January and they did seven deals. This is little, so I'm gonna like read this. So this is a solar company, but I just thought it was interesting because I wanted to give like the most relevant information. Seven deals, then they came to our sales summit in March, or in May, and in June they did 97 deals. So they went from seven to 97 deals. The average contract value they do is 30,000. So do the math on this. So then in July, they kind of dipped a little bit and then they decided to hire us to consult them. So we started sending them guys. We said, let's fill your team up because they only had about 12 guys. So I said, let's start filming, filling your team up. And he said, this is our growth from when I started Simple January, May 28th. I brought my team, DD Summit. Next month, we double our stats and signed up with DD Consulting from other span of now July. This is just on our group text. And I, he doesn't even know I'm sharing this, but back in to track our continuous growth. We've nine times our team size since January. We've 10x our first month, ended the first year in 25 million in sales. Sam and his team has helped to set up finances to actually start becoming profitable because he didn't even know how to pay himself as an owner. But they'll do 25 million this year. First year in business, he's 26 years old. Um, I wanted to show this. So this month they did almost 200 deals. Um, but I wanted to show this because it's what, what he did well, better than any of our students. Well, there's one that we can go into, but there's a roofing dude in North Carolina. But the, what he did the best is he simply just took this formula and took it serious. I double, I 10 x the amount of people I had. I made my people, like he talked, like he literally blitzes every day they knock. They straight up knock every day. Him as the owner, two weeks ago, put in 15 deals himself. As the owner. And they followed this formula and I have case study after case study and I'm not gonna do like this whole rant on how that looks. But I promise you, you apply that simple formula and your company can grow. But the, the third problem is we have what's called decision fatigue. One of our students in, in, or one of our clients in, in, North, or, uh, in Colorado, they, uh, Jose knows them, I'm not gonna say names. We go out to film their training platform and they make a video and my training guy comes back and he's like, hey, I have this really brilliant video idea that we should put in our training. You should copy that video and put it in DDDU. And I was like, well, what is it? And he's like, it's the 17 things that they should do every day. Six like, and? It's like, yeah, talk to the insurance agents, not commercial, work your bills, work referrals, post on Facebook, make you, and he lists out all the 17. I couldn't remember them all. And I, what did I say to him? No, I will not put that video and you should delete that video of his that he filmed. Because could they do all these things? Are these good things? Yeah, they're all really good things. You should do them all maybe if that's what you want to do. 
And they're not bad. All of those are good things. And everyone in this group, in these trainings, I could give workshops on every single one of those things. I could. But I was like, until you can get somebody to just do this one thing, a full day, and put the stinking blinders on them, like this, and say, do this. So it's not up to them, because if you leave your success up to your people, they don't know how to be successful. They're brand new. You pull them out of working at Chick-fil-A. Like, they don't know. And they get what's called decision fatigue, and there's so many things they could be doing, they do none of them. Does that make sense? So if I simply said you show up at Cherry and Maple Street at 1 o'clock, you knock these five streets until nine o'clock. Do you have any question what you should be doing? And if you do anything different than that, you are not doing your job. All of a sudden, you put the blinders on them and they do monkey see, monkey do. But then the other problem in this roofing space, is let's go back to this slide is we are making, as business owner, our salespeople, and salespeople, you'll thank me for this, you're making them do three jobs when they're salespeople. I get to this space, and I was like, oh, you're like the solar industry was 10 years ago. Roofing's been around way longer than solar. I do not know how you have not figured this out yet. Salespeople do what? Sell. Project management people do what? Project manage. ADD salespeople, organized and like data driven, project manager, personality types. You ask me to go follow up on CRMs and call customers and pick up checks and go like put a data stuff. Literally today in my workshop, I sold a bunch of boot camps or whatever, and I'm like, Dude, just text me and I will literally forward text to my team that will do all the onboarding, all the billing, all the collecting, all of the send, you the send you the dates and stuff. What do I need to do? Close you. That's it. Am I right or am I right? Say yes. Thank you. But most of you guys are like, well, I'm like an owner operator and you end up doing $20 an hour tasks 80% of your time. So I broke this down, and I can micro break this down, I can break this down five different ways, but what I just wanted to put was, don't have them collect money, don't have them sit there and babysit a job, don't have them sit there and do the supplementing and all the freaking busy work with the insurance crap, don't have, like, it takes so much time to try to train somebody to that, when I'm like, I could compartmentalize, specialize people in my company to be really good at those things, and I could specialize people to be really good at door knocking. So I just say double down on being, because the people that make the most money in this industry are the people that go out and sling the most jobs. And if your time is getting sucked up by doing other things that aren't selling, that's costing you more money, but you don't see it that way. You're being busy, but not productive. You're doing non-revenue generating tasks, and the more you can do revenue generating tasks and put your people in situations to do more revenue generating tasks, your income goes like this. But it feels a lot better to send emails. It feels a lot better to just like, you know, follow up and talk to already customers or talk to referrals because they're not kicking you in the nuts. It doesn't feel good cold calling. It doesn't feel good sweating or freezing your ass off in the Minnesota knocking on doors. It doesn't feel good. So therefore, your emotional lizard brain goes, well, let's not do that. Let's do the path of least resistance was just kind of like follow up and do like busy work. Does that make sense? Yeah. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Say I'm getting it. Good. So. Fourth problem I see is we got a training problem. And in my workshops, I went hard into this. I just trained people that all said, I'm bad A knockers. And I go, one of you was really good. And obviously, I made you come up with a pitch on the spot. But in my opinion, a really good salesperson could sell me this microphone, could sell me this sticky note, and could sell me that. And they would sound really good because they know sales. 
Does that make sense? They've been trained. They would say, okay, what's my problem, solution, transition? What's my objections that are gonna probably be coming up? How do I break some ice? How do I create rapport? They're thinking through those things. Doesn't matter the widget. Because they've been trained as a sales professional. I look at this job and I, I, I think of us as athletes. Vivint Solar, it's actually really cool. They went to Nike and they got sponsored by Nike because they said, this is our sport. We have ESPN, we have teams, we compete, we have competitions, we have athletes. That, we make athlete type money. And Nike said, cool, we'll sponsor you. They're the only non-athletic department that's sponsored by Nike. Because they treat it and think of it just like any other sport. I don't think of this job to do this to a paycheck. I don't do this to look at my Friday income because that's what's gonna stop you from selling because it's gonna fill your emotional bucket of your financial needs are met. I do this job to compete. I say, who's the best out there and how do I compete on a high level? How do I play against the top A leagues? How do I go like Brian Arnold who did like $17 million of roofing in the last three years? He, you know what I mean? I think he did like $9 million this year. How do I go play that game? So. It's, it's not about my paycheck at that point, it's just about being the best. And when you are a professional, don't you think Michael Jordan, you know, I, I, Tim Grover came and spoke at our uh, event last year and I got to do some podcasts and some events with him. He trained Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, he was like their personal trainer. Anybody seen The Last Dance, he's in that? It was cool though. I got to spend a day, he flew out to Utah, he hung out with me today, one day and I have a court in my house and he, and, and, and he was like passing me the ball and I was like, Tim Grover is training me on how to shoot basketballs right now. He trained Michael Jordan. This is dope. And I said, Michael Jordan, I was like, how much did he pay you? He's like, I can't tell you. I was like, come on. Michael Jordan, Le LeBron James spends a million dollars a year just on his body because he knows how important that investment of his body and his skill and his personal training and his, like that is what his money maker is. And I'm like, if I'm an athlete, I am literally in the gym more than I'm not in the, uh, on the court playing the game. There's, the money is made off the rink, not in the rink, right? But so many times we think that training on the job is training. Does that make sense? By doing it, we're training. Wrong. I know for a fact now, no offense, I'm not like trying to call you out, I just, you guys volunteered and I just happened to use this. I know for a fact now that they have training that needs to be done, these five people, right? And I know for a fact that they've probably been doing roofing more than 12 months. So then I go ask myself and I go, man, You've been doing it the wrong way. Charles Barkley, have you ever seen him swing a golf club? Anyone? <laughs> Good, some laughing golfing guys. He plays in the celebrity tournament all the time and he literally looks like this. He gets up there, and he's played golf for 20 years. <laughs> and you're just like, what? He doesn't look at the other golfers and say, I am doing it completely different for 20 years? Just because he's been playing golf for 20 years doesn't make him a good golfer. So the four problems, one, they don't buy in. Two, we have a work ethic problem. Three, we have a decision fatigue problem. We're juggling way too many things. Four, we have a training problem. So everybody's gonna hate me for this and I'm not trying to sell this by any means, but I'm just saying stop buying everyone else's training and let's make your training. When I talk about training and onboarding, I could have gone and made a bunch of online courses. We sell online courses all the time. But I was like, I don't want to be that guy just selling my videos. I want to go make everybody else's videos. So I have a team of three different videographers. They come fly out. They film your content. We white label it with your brand, your faces, your stuff. And we've done that with over 150 companies now. Because I'm like, what do your people want to see? You, how do you be the influence to your people instead of you outsourcing it to people like me? I lose money when you outsource it to people when you don't do that, but I want to teach you to be the influence in your company. For you to be a better leader for your people so they look to you and they say, he is my hero, instead of somebody else. That's what I care about. Does that make sense? So I want to turn the eyes into you and say, how do we make you the all-stars of your platform? That's what we do at DD Experts. 
Um, so I've got to wrap up, but we have a training platform you can look at, or we have a boot camp coming up December 10th, 11th, January 25th and 26th, um, and February 24th and 25th. I need my phone. Do you still got my phone? Um, I got to pick the winner. Come here. If he's in here, you got to come up here and we'll like give you a big like shout. Okay. So we do a bunch of training and consulting. If you're interested, just go to the website or click the little like QR thing. Um, I got you. I need to go into the type form. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay, while I'm filling this out, or while I'm looking for the winner real quick, while I wrap up, I got a couple other things I want to say. First off, who learned something out of this last 45 minutes? Who learned something? Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I don't want to hear like a hand raise. Come on, guys. I like it. We got 146 people, so I'm going to go to results, and I'm going to, so you know that it's anonymous. Oh, that didn't work. I don't know how to use this stuff very good. Oh, here we go. Responses. Got it. Found it. Okay. So you see it. Josh and, and Jorge and, sorry, I'm scrolling past your names, if that was you. <laughs> I will go like this. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do, there's 147 of these things. No, but he's like, damn it. Okay, I got one. Ah, crap. I can't see it. Igor? Igor? Where's my Igor at XYZ Roofs? What? Let's give it up, baby! Winner! Okay. Get up here. Have you already bought a ticket? Okay, good. So you get one for free. Okay. So, $2,000 ticket. He gets one. Big deal. Text me your... Or I'll just screenshot this. I'll email it to you. Got it. Okay. All right. Let's give it up for Igor. That was awesome. I just want to get a free thing. Um, okay, so... Um, oh wait, I'm supposed to do this. So last thing I want to say, so this is, I have supposed to show you on this one. Um, but I appreciate you guys. The last thing I wanted to finish with before I just wrap this up, I'm pretty hard on a lot of people. I'm pretty, you know, like sometimes I try to kick people nuts. I, my goal is to get 20% of the room to hate me. So I hope I did that today. Um, one of the things I found, I'm passionate about what I do. And it, the reason is, is because DoorDoor has changed my life. And I want to share this with you guys. I just want to get real real quick. And I shared this in the last breakout. DoorDoor -door changed my life because, you know, I've been able to buy real estate, travel the world, make the income that it gave me financial freedom, have all sorts of cool stuff, help tons of people, see, see the country, right? And I said, the problem is, is not everybody's getting the same experience that I got. I luckily plugged into one of the best programs out there. Some people are plugging into your program. Maybe it's great, but maybe it needs some work, but they might leave your program a month later and say this was a scam. And I'm passionate and I, I, I want you to take on the mantle of running a door-to-door -door organization with pride. And I want you to look at it and say, I'm proud of our program and culture and leadership and systems to give every opportunity that comes in our door the best chance to succeed, and that's why I'm hard on people. We consult, we train, we have tons of tools and programs so that we can help the future door-to-door -door people and the current door-to-door -door people in America do a good job. Because we have a big threat against us. The customer, they could give us a bad rap if we have bad apples in the streets. If we have bad training, we could get bad raps with attorney generals. We, I founded the Door-to-Door -door Association, it's a nonprofit. We're, we're pushing to help licensing laws help you know, improve certifications for sales guys to actually be like third party validated and a lot of really cool initiatives. That's what I'm more passionate about. So if anything that I've said today, I hope you guys take the mantle of door to door with pride and treat it and do it with respect and do it honorably and do it with integrity and do it and like represent this tribe well when you guys go back home. And that's what I wanna invite you guys to do. So I appreciate your guys time and thank you guys for letting me be here and uh, help you guys out. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now...